Hello everyone, we are here for another YouTube episode and we are talking today about the difference between money and freedom. Now, which one of these are more important and how do we define this? How do we look at this? We're gonna unpack this. Did you know we all have different perspectives on what these things mean? And we all have different perspectives on what it means to be successful. We've all been impacted by how we grew up, things that we went through, things that we believe, and we always have to retool and reset and make sure that as we live life, that we're really aligning ourselves with the right way of thinking about what we're trying to do. You know, we are all all on this planet just only for a certain amount of time and you know at some point it seems almost endless when you're young and as you get older you start to realize that every moment is very precious and there's so many things that you, you, you learn that is more important and that is most critical to your happiness and your joy and your fulfillment and so we're going to talk a little bit about the difference between these two, which, you know, what, what is what is really critical? Now, you might say, I, I, I feel this or I feel that. But how do you actually act? What do you actually do? How do you actually live? What do you actually do with in terms of the decisions that you make? Are your decisions aligned with what you say you understand in terms of the difference between money and freedom? Now, when you think about that and you think about all the different dynamics, right? Uh, and you think about all the things we do uh, to be successful. Now, one thing that you've heard me say many times, which is very important, is that success needs to be redefined. Success is accomplishing things important to you while maintaining your happiness. Very important, accomplishing things important to you while maintaining your happiness. People often don't include that, that, that latter part there that we have to maintain some levels of happiness. We've seen so many people that were wealthy and had enormous amount of resources, but committed suicide. We've seen so many people who uh, had you know, were on the top of the world by the standard of, you know, everyone who was watching and yet they were depressed and they were, you know, doing things to hurt their body. Why? Because it, it does matter how you feel about yourself. It does matter how happy you are. It does matter how much you're enjoying life. So we want to really be able to, you know, understand the difference between the two and why it's so important if you really want to be successful to have both. We're achieving things that's important to us, but we're also maintaining our happiness. Now, when you think about just how this whole thing is set up, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, when you really consider, you know, we're going to dig into this a little bit about uh, money and freedom. But, you know, when you think about life, you know, a lot, we, we deal with so many different things and some of the most precious times in our life have nothing to do with money. Right. They have everything to do with experiences that we had, things that we enjoy. And, you know, you don't get to the end of your days and, you know, you're you're sitting somewhere and you're you know, you know, you don't have much long on earth and think about, boy, I remember when I had one hundred thousand dollars in the bank. Wow. I remember the first time I made ten thousand dollars. Right. You start thinking about the things that are important to you, the people that are important to you, the times that you laugh, the times that you cry, the times that were precious to you. And so it's very critical when we think about the balance between the role that money should play and what it really means to have a, a life of freedom, to be able to live the life that I want, to be able to have the moments that I want in life. Now, you know, we think about the retirement dilemma. Let me go to my whiteboard for a minute and think about this. You know, I, I like to call this the retirement dilemma. And everyone, you know, thinks about, you know, one day maybe retiring. Uh, I don't know if I'm spelling dilemma right there. But when you think about the retirement dilemma, now, you know, it's like you, you, you go through life, right, with all these different things you go through, right, and you get to the end, Right. And the challenge is we tend, you know, however much time, you know, this was right in, in terms of, of years is different for all of us. But the way this whole thing is set up is that we, we get to the end and, you know, right here at the tail end, we say, I'm going to get retirement. Right. I'm going to get a retirement where I could finally now live a life that I enjoy. Right. So let's look at this piece here. Right. That here's 
you know, I want to like, I want to enjoy my life. Well, I just think this whole plan is just ridiculous. I mean, my goodness, you think about this type of plan that I'm going to get all the way to the end and then I'm going to enjoy my life. Um, and, you know, all this time of mountains and valleys and exchanging all of the energies and talents that I had to try to get, uh, you know, to try to be able to survive, right? And, and then to get to the end. And you know what's happening now is a lot of times people are getting to this end point and they still got to go back in here to work, right? Because it, they found it's still too expensive uh, to live and to have that enjoyment. So this is a, this is a, a definite, definite dilemma. Now, I want to talk to you about some concepts that are very important as we consider the, the, the battle between money and freedom. You know, what is the, which is more important? What is, what, is, what is really the critical things we need to understand there? Now, let's, let's look at this and kind of unpack this a little bit. So we look here, uh, I want you to consider there's one belief system where, let's do, we've got time is equal to money. So some people have this perspective, right? That uh, time and money are equal. So um, I feel like, you know, I can get, you know, um, you know, my, my, like basically you've heard people say, time is money, right? That's saying it's equal, like time is money. So, you know, like I don't wanna waste my time because time is money. And this could be further from the truth, right? This is so not true, but this is the, this is the, the thinking that we've been reared up in, right? That time is money, right? Time is money. And so we, we have to think differently about this because it does impact the decisions you make in life and how you begin to understand, uh, you know, what is the difference between the two. Now, when you think about time as money, if I make time and money equal, there's a certain decisions in certain ways that I'll look at things, right? In terms of decisions that I'm making with my money and my time, because I feel they're equal. I feel they're, there's no difference between the two. Now, here's another perspective is that uh, money is greater than time, right? Money's greater than time. So here, uh, here, you know, I'm constantly not conscious of time or my freedom, but I value money so much, I'll do anything to get it. I'll give all my time to get the money because for me, the money is greater than the time. And I'm showing it by how much time I spend to get the money, right? And so, you know, most people, you know, it's the, the life that uh, the majority of of, you know, just common people have to live is more, you know, I, I work, you know, and I work, 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 work. And then I get some money, right? And then I do the whole thing again, work. And then two weeks later, a month later, I get some money, right? So I might work I might actually work 28 days and there's two days that I actually make money. Now that sounds crazy, but isn't this true, right? You work, get a check twice a week, I mean twice a month, uh, it's pretty common, right? So I work, give a lot of uh, time, to get the two, you know, these two. Now, I would, who would do that unless they felt that that money was more valuable than all that time? And so this is, again, how a lot of our systems of, of work and labor are built. Uh, it's built around the concept that money is greater than time, so we'll exchange a lot of it to get a little bit of the money, right? If something is more valuable, then we'll take less of it for something that was more. So I would give, you know, um, 
I would give a lot of pennies to get a lot of dollars, right? I would give a lot of dollars to get a lot of tens, you know, back, you know, so forth and so on. If I was exchanging something, I would want something of more value. I would take less, you know, of, of that, right? So if I had two pieces of gold, I would give a lot of stuff to get those two pieces of gold because I value that. I feel gold is worth a lot, right? So again, we're in this model where we're giving more of our time Right. And more of our freedom away to get le to get less of this commodity called money. And so this is, again, this battle between money and freedom. Now, here's another perspective. Which is actually the true perspective. Let me get my other color here. Is that. Time. Is greater than money. Time is greater than money. So in this particular thinking, there is an emphasis on freedom. This one has an uh, emphasis on money. So when we think about the, the time being greater than money, well, now we're actually getting deeper into this conversation about money versus time and understanding that as much as possible, if time is greater than money, I want to keep more of my time, right? Uh, and I'll exchange money to get more of my time. So this is again, uh, you know, a lot of times we're looking for situations where we may work and then there's money coming in all the time, right? Then we work and there's money coming in all the time, right? This is the ideal situation, right? Less work, more money. I think all of you would, would agree with that, right? So the, the, the concept of, you know, work, 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 get paid, work, 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 get paid, versus work, get paid, get paid, get paid, get paid, get paid, work, get paid, get paid, get paid, get paid. And a lot of times people will use that analogy as a way of thinking that I'm shifting my thinking towards being more purposeful about the importance of freedom. So this is a very key thing. We're trying to understand the importance of freedom and how to think differently about the difference between money and freedom and how these things work together. So I want you to consider that. So exchanging time for money is something that will always be limited, right? Because we only have so much time, right? We only got so many hours in a day. There's only so many things we can even do with the human body if we're exchanging time for money. But the, the beauty, beautiful thing about money is I can get more money, right? I can lose it and get more of it. I can lose and get more of it. Time, I lose it, it's gone. There'll never be another, you know, uh, day exactly like this day. And it's almost never present because we're always in the past. As soon as I say present, it's past, right? So as soon as I say now, it's, it's, it's later, right? It's earlier, I should say. Why? Because time is always moving, all right? You can't get it back. So uh, it is very evident that time is, is definitely more valuable than money. And you've heard me talk about this many times. If someone gives you a certain amount of money, you know, $5 million, $10 million, but then told you you only had two weeks to live, right? This is, again, you know, we would all agree that's not a good deal, even though that's an enormous amount of money. So we know inherently that time is greater than money. Now, because we understand this, I want you to consider, so when we think about, uh, you know, why do we want to create wealth? Now, I'm definitely not saying we don't need money. We all need money. We all want to make more money. I want to make more money, right? But it's different when you understand the relationship between money and freedom. It's different to understand what, what is the reason that I want to actually make that money? How do I want to actually use that money to get to the life that I want? Now, I want you to consider if I can use money, right, to buy my time 
to be able to create the freedom, right? So let's look at that. So even no matter where I actually, you know, generate money and I see it as an ability to buy time, which then allows me to buy freedom. So money, time, right? And here is the fulfillment that we all want. So it's a different way of thinking, even no matter where you work, what you do, if you work in a professional or corporate job, if you have a trade, or if you're an entrepreneur, to see that I'm trying to generate enough money to allow me to buy my time, which will allow me to use that time in the way that I want for, for freedom. So this is why freedom is, is a greater goal than even money itself. But money can help me buy that freedom. So again, one of the things that we're trying to do is we're looking for ways that we can use money to buy back time, right? So again, as you start, you know, getting more responsibilities and doing things, we all start learning about doing things like this, right? If I'm, uh, you know, here, here's the thing. A lot of times there's one person who thinks this way. Um, so do it myself to save money. Now I know this is this is <laughs> this is a tough topic because I know we all are guilty of this, right? We all do this at different times. I ain't spend no money on that. No, I can do that. I ain't spend. Are you crazy? I can. They gonna charge this for that, right? So, and this is the mindset, right? And a lot of us, say, hey, do it myself, save money. There's another mindset of I'll say it this way. Spend my money to save myself. Wow. Wow. What a statement. What a statement. Now, we might all have different levels that we can do this based on where we're at in our life, but we're talking about today is money versus freedom and what, we sh what should we be looking at? What should be our goal? What should we be striving for? What are we thinking about when we wake up every day, when we do go to work and we get in the car and we drive and we go to, 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 to that particular job or when as an entrepreneur you wake up every day and you're fighting to be successful? Uh, so many people fall in love or get addicted to the pursuit of money that they forget that money itself does not bring enjoyment. It does not bring happiness. It is, it is something that alone does not do anything that can fulfill you. Now, it does have the power to get things that you might enjoy. No doubt about that. No, we're, we're not knocking money. But the key is, if you understand the greater goal, then you'll work, wake, wake up with a mission of being very clear of what you're working for and thinking about how to strategize a plan for your life that allows you to think about how my money can buy my time to get me freedom. Now, consider this. When you think about, you know, as you start getting more responsibilities, you start thinking about, you know, it's that decision of, you know, how often do I, uh, you know, you, you might enjoy uh, cooking and someone else, you know, may not enjoy that it's not as fulfilling to them, so they spend money, you know, to not have to cook so that they can have their time and enjoy the meal and enjoy that conversation. We started a meal prep company not long ago uh, for that very thing, to help people eat more healthy, but also to give them some of their freedom, right? Even if it's sometime, like I'll still cook, but I don't have to cook as often. Maybe if you have a, a yard and, and, and you say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a landscaper do this because I want my time, right? I want my freedom. So you're thinking about those things, like how many different ways, you know, is there something, you know, if I can create a situation where I can get my car washed or I can make sure certain things are taken care of that need to be taken care of so I can get back my time. Because that time is the, is the canister, it is the container that allows you to move towards getting freedom. Now, when you think about it, 
this is a different way of thinking, right? It's a different way of, of, of being. It's a different way of, of looking at things, right? Because, you know, we're always considering how can I more quickly get to the freedom? So remember, when we think about uh, money, you know, we talk about how wealth is, is something that has to have, a, for it to truly be wealth, it has to have speed in it, right? And let, let's look at this for a minute because we, we, we're looking at money versus freedom. So let's say we have, um, I don't know, let's, uh, oh, I got to do better than that. That's a, let's create a, a person here. And um, uh, we got a person here that um, this is, this is Kurt, and uh, you know, Kurt feels pretty awesome, and Kurt, sorry, Kurt made a million dollars, all right? Then we have another individual here um, this is, this is, we're going to, th this is, uh, this is Melissa and M Melissa is happy. And so Melissa here, uh, she, she's, she's again, when you think about the fact that she has a hundred thousand dollars. Now, one of the things that I want you to think about is all of us have what I would like to call um, a freedom threshold. And that freedom threshold is basically how much money would I need to be coming into my life passively, where I'm not continually working, but it's coming into my life, right? How much passive income, and if those who don't know about passive income, mean I put some effort in up front and then the money keeps coming, right? So this, this is, you know, stop my session today, but there's a lot of way to, ways to create passive income, right? Whether that's through real estate, affiliate programs, creating uh, certain things online, selling a product, having a newsletter, a blog that people subscribe to, having something that people uh, pay you a monthly fee for something that you provide. Uh, and, uh, or, you know, there's stock, there's other things, but creating different ways that passive income is coming into your life uh, and again, there's a threshold that if I had a certain amount of money, right, I would be able to live off of that while keeping my money in the bank or even if I have money coming from other things, even though I do have a job, I still have this freedom threshold. If I had this amount of money coming in and you'd be surprised, you know, some people, they might be able to live off of $60,000, right? if they had to. Now, there's a lot of things they could do, but they could live like you want to make $200,000, but you could live off 60 if you needed to. And you'd be surprised. I mean, if I had a product that I could, uh, or like a, something that was passive, let's say I started a, uh, a program or something that I provide, or I created a, um, something, you know, education, coaching, anything, and someone's going to pay me a hundred dollars a month, and I basically get 50 people to do that, right? This is, this is between me and freedom, right? I'm trying to get to freedom. Imagine I created something, I had, you know, I even is able to connect to something that someone else has made. You know, like we, you are still, we have an affiliate program. You know, you can do things like this. Imagine you could, you know, I got 50 people to do this. I actually would hit my freedom threshold. So I'm working, but not because I have to. And I'm actually able to live off the passive income. So this is the goal, right? This is why someone would want to make a million dollars, have it in the bank, earning, you know, I mean, not a bank, but putting it into something they can earn five or six percent and live off the sixty thousand dollars a year, right? But you got to get the million dollars to be able to do that. That's what rich people do. Or you start thinking backwards and saying, well, how can I create uh, this? You know, sixty. This uh, sixty thousand is basically five thousand a month.
So how can I create the 5,000 a month in passive income so I'm, I'm living as if I had a million dollars in the bank earning interest on it, right? So there's a lot of ways to get to that. But my point is we should be thinking about what is that freedom threshold, right? Now, back to what I was talking about with Kurt and Melissa. So Kurt, he's made a million dollars. And there's a few things that we could look at here. So one angle is, Kurt has made a million dollars, right? But Kurt has absolutely no time or freedom, right? Melissa, it's $100,000, but she's got freedom, right? Living the life that she wants. She's doing the things that she enjoys. And keep in mind, we all, you know, and we'll talk about this in a minute, but we should all have our own freedom list, right? What, what, is, what, is freedom, what does freedom mean to you? What does it mean to me? What is fulfilling for me? What do I enjoy, right? So think about that. We all should have a freedom list. So back to what we talked about earlier, this whole retirement dilemma of, you know, do everything you can to survive and at the end of life, try to enjoy it. Throw that away. No, we want to try to enjoy as much of life as we can because those are the moments we're going to remember when it's all said and done anyway. So if I've not defined what those freedom things are for me, right? So I should be thinking about, so imagine if we thought about, what if we thought about freedom as a currency, Right? How many freedom dollars do you have? In other words, how often have you been able to do the things that you enjoy? That's a deep, deep thought. So you can say, how often have you made money? We could all measure that. How much money do you make every week? How much freedom? Uh, if I have freedom dollars, how rich am I? Right? And freedom. So in other words, so there's some things I like to do, right? And I need to get my freedom currency up, but I'm in the process of building some things to have the more freedom and it takes some work to get to the freedom. So nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying just sit around having freedom and, and jump, you know, be at this ocean front that I'm at right now. Uh, but what I'm saying is you, you have to know what you're working for and there's a way to enjoy freedom on the path to freedom. Let me say that one more time. There's a way to enjoy freedom on the path to freedom. And the only way to do that is I have to be intentional about what that looks like for me so that I'm intentional about how to create those moments throughout my journey on my way to the ultimate freedom of having enough passive income to be able to have the freedom that I want. In other words, now making money has a purpose. I'm not making money for the car or for the big house. I'm not making money for the fancy clothes. I'm not making money to show you that I'm something to validate who I am. I'm not making money for you to call my name. The reason I want to make money and I would try to inspire you to want to make money is that I would be able to use that money to create the freedom that I want to live the life with the people that I care about and to do the things that are important to me. That's what freedom is. I love swimming. I like playing basketball. I like music, I, uh, playing on the piano, uh, the drums. I like playing sequence, uh, you know, playing spades sometimes. I like playing dominoes, right? I like to uh, learn. I like it, you know, to, to learn more. I love learning about science. I love learning about, you know, um, nature. You know, I love spending time with people that I care about, love to laugh with people that I enjoy those moments with, right? So, you know, there's you know, all these, these moments you have, you know, that with the people you care about, like my wife, like my family and friends, you know, you, you, these are the things that become the most precious to you, right? But a lot of times we all, all of us, and I'm guilty too, we're, we're, we're doing so much that we don't see the freedom currency is, you know, like we bankrupt, right? Like when's the last time I did something that is a part of the freedom, the life that I really want, the things that I enjoy, right? I got to work. I got to do those things. And I'm working with purpose because I want to start thinking about, and, and again, even in your work, right? There's another aspect of freedom. Even in the work that you have, 
doing things that you enjoy because you can be like Kurt and you're making a million dollars, but you hate your job. You hate the people you work with. You hate what you're doing. It brings nothing to, but stress to you every single day, but it pays the bills. You can have another job making less money, but the freedom currency is higher where you have the flexibility, you're working with things, people you, you love and enjoy working with, you're doing things that you enjoy, and you have to evaluate those two things differently if you're looking at freedom currency. Very, very important. Now, but here's another thing. My whole point here was about the speed of wealth and that speed matters when we define wealth. Now, before I go any further, though, I need to make sure and tell you to subscribe and like and comment. And, you know, definitely, you know, I always like to tell you all to share, let people know what's going on. When we have live discussions like this because we're always talking about something that is very powerful and something that's very life changing. And so please make sure uh, to comment, like, subscribe if you haven't already and share. Let people know what we're talking about today. But let's take Kurt for a minute. Kurt got to this million dollars by working 50 years for $20,000 a year. You've heard me talk about that. Melissa makes $100 a month. I'm kind of changing the game here a little bit. You, 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 you see why Melissa's smiling. You see, you, you see what you see now. Melissa's smiling for real uh, because I just changed the dynamic, right? Now I, I started off with it looking like Kurt has just a million dollars. He just, you know, he just got it like that, and then Melissa only got a hundred thousand. But I did something here that changed everything because I simply changed the time element. So. We want to make money as fast as we can to be able to enjoy it. So the reason I say this is not to put pressure on any of us to make more money in a way that makes no sense. But what I'm telling you is, is the sense of urgency to not wait for that business you want to start. I don't care if it just makes an extra $500 a month. That's $500 a month, right? On my way toward what I'm trying to build. I don't care if it's just one thing. I don't care if it's taking a, an affiliate program more seriously, like the A Club or other things that you can do uh, that, uh, that are affiliate oriented. I don't care if it's looking for new ways to upgrade who you are and your learning so people will pay you more for less effort because you've increased your capabilities by investing in yourself. Uh, seeing you, you are, you know, the concept of saving up to become wealthy, right? Versus investing up to become wealthy. And that investment is in yourself or it can be in something that creates an asset that generates more money. And you are an asset that can generate more money. The more you know, the more you understand, the more you have inside, the greater potential you have to make more money. You become your best asset. Your creativity is your greatest wealth. It's your greatest asset. It's worth way more than what you have in the bank. Because with this, you can lose it all and get it back again, right? With this, you can, everything can be destroyed and you can build it up again because of what's in here. Don't tell me you don't have the talent. Don't tell me you're not good enough. All of us have something about us. Uh, we were made that way. We have a genius um, uh, mechanism up here called the human brain. We've got talents and things that come easy to us and some things that people try to do, you do it without even thinking because it's a part of who you are. You have to find that talent. You have to tap into that energy. You have to see what makes you different and what makes you special. And a lot of time, if you listen, people will tell you and you learn how to use that to create new opportunities. And this is extremely important, creating new opportunities because you have changed the way that you look at what you do, who you are, and what you can create. So this is extremely, extremely important. And, you know, all of you should make your freedom list, right? And I want to say this, uh, going back to when we think about uh, time, so we want to have the mentality, right, that, well, let me come here, that I want to buy 
back my time, right? As much as possible to buy back my time. If you don't have an image in your mind of what the freedom life looks like, why would you fight for it? Right? I got something in my mind. I, I, I'm working towards something. I wanna, I'm putting a lot of work in and energy because I'm seeing something down the road. And even as, as, as you know, taxing as all my responsibilities are, I have a freedom list. And I do have a situation where the things that are most important to me, I can do them if I need to. As busy as I am, there are things that, I, that are important to me in my spiritual life. There are responsibilities I have beyond business. There are many things, that people that I have to serve. There are many people that I help across the week, across the days. I am as busy as I am. I am living a life that allows me to have the freedom to do the things that are important to me, even though I work hard every single day. But within that, I still have freedom. And what am I trying to do? I'm working every day to build systems that generate the wealth to buy me the time to create the freedom. But make sure to enjoy that freedom along the way on the path to freedom by being clear and intentional about those freedom moments, the things that you enjoy, looking for opportunities to create that now. Don't wait, don't have the retirement mindset about your life that later on I'll enjoy, later on I'll smile, later on I'll laugh. Make sure you're thinking about how many ways, how many times can I begin to have my freedom currency grow because I'm spending time doing things that make me feel free and enjoy life because this life is not long and we have to make every day count because every day the present is never there because it has already passed. I hope you enjoyed this today. We're talking about money versus freedom and I hope you can see there's something to be said about freedom and there's something different we have to think about. We don't wanna think like the poor who think money is just to pay bills. We don't wanna think about the, like the middle class who thinks money is to pay your bills on time, have a good credit score so you can get things with debt that you can't really afford. We want to have a wealthy mindset, which thinks about money being used to create money and then using that money to buy back my time so I can live the life that I want. You don't have to be wealthy to think wealthy, start in the mind and end it with your hands and feet. I'm Michael E. Parker. I hope you enjoyed this session. As always, we want to get out there and run the business of our career, the business of our, our, our entrepreneurship. And more importantly, for us to do all those things well, we want to run the business of you. Until next time, I'll see you soon. Get out there and create the freedom. Live life now because tomorrow is not promised. I'll see you soon.